Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, August 16th, 2018. In this video, we'll do an update on the broad markets. We'll keep this um, uh, general public content uh, with just a broad overview of the markets, uh, maybe hit on currencies. I did post, uh, make, made a public post on the site yesterday with the outlook for the U.S. dollar. My touch follow up on that. And then I'll follow up uh, either with another video or some static charts on the on the site, right side of the chart for the uh, subscribers with uh, the things I've been following lately, Bitcoin, crude oil, uh, gold, uh, anything else that stands out at this point in time. And let's start out here. Actually, let's jump back. This chart is uh, the NQ 60-minute, NASDAQ 160-minute futures. This was a chart I posted in the trading room earlier today, about 11.18 uh, this morning, uh, showing a couple things. I had this boxed range. The white box is really the sideways trading range that we've been in for about five weeks now. Uh, you can see that's contained most of the, uh, the trades within the NASDAQ 100, so we seem to be grinding around this sideways range and today we're at the top of the range so you know I have a uh, I highlighted some resistance we're a little bit below or were this morning and still are uh, 774 what is that 7457.90 we'll call it 7458 give or take uh, which is you know my uppermost bounce target right now I still favor some more downside in the near term uh, although, again, my convictions aren't super high right now, but uh, we've certainly seen these divergences from this point right here play out. Uh, the question is, do they have more to play out? And I can't say with the highest degree of confidence, but I am leaning that way right now. Uh, so there's the uh, last divergent high. And so far we had, you know, this first leg down and the second leg down. And here we are. So uh, this will be a significant level, too, if we take out that 78. Uh, 7458 excuse me if we take that level out we would have taken out these previous highs and you can see there's a lot of reactions around that level as well reactions from above that seems to be a pretty important level and again it's really the top for the most part of this uh, sideways trading range minus a few brief uh, spikes above it so that's a level to watch on NQ and let's take a look at where we are now Okay, this is a live streaming chart of NQ. Again, that chart or it was from this morning. And here's where we're at right now. So you have the same trading range again. You can see it's pretty pretty clear how it stands out there. And so far, uh, the NQ's really stalled out. Today was all about the uh, S&P 500, a little more strength today. And so we kind of stalled out about where we were then. And we pulled back to support. You can see the support line right there. Uh, quite, a, quite a few reactions to the left. So... Uh, there it is, and again, this is just showing you that the, we don't have a lot of strength, a lot of vigor right now. We do have a key semiconductor. NVIDIA reports after the close today, so heads up. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Um, and that could set the stage for the semiconductor sector uh, and also obviously carry over into the tech-heavy NASDAQ 100. So there's NQ. And again, this morning uh, in the trading room, I had posted at the same time uh, down here, the uh, S&P 500 E-mini futures. And at that point, we were right here, right about, uh, that's why what prompted me to do the post. We're right at this 2846-ish uh, support right there. I'm sorry, resistance. And uh, I've, you know, split between reversing right there or a push up a little higher. Uh, although I have the box drawn right here, you can see there's my uh, resistance line up there, the next level at 2852.78. That was uh, my alternative scenario. And uh, pretty much, I think we pushed up there. Let's look at that chart. Okay, so that chart was a few hours ago. And there we did go ahead and we, we took out that level and, and really reversed almost looks like to the button, at least, you know, this chart, I'd have to zoom in a little more, but it looks like a, a pretty much a tag and a reversal close enough off that level. So uh, again, it's pretty an important range. The S&P is still within just, you know, a very close range of, of taking out. Uh, those previous highs from back in January, but it's yet to do so, uh, which is, you know, in a sense, a sign of weakness. In fact, I posted an article on the front page today. I'm sorry, not front page of the site. It was in the trading room uh, regarding the uh, Dow, how it's been in the longest corrective phase, uh, longest correction period since. Uh, OK, I had to pull it up on another monitor. Yeah, the uh, Dow. Uh, he has failed to move 10% above its closing low that it hit back in February early this year on that first big drop. And it's now spent the longest period in correction territory. This article is from a couple days ago. I don't think that's been taken out yet. 131 trading sessions. So that would be now about 133 or four uh, since the longest period, the previous longest 
record. And again, that is after you had a correction with, with articles referring to, you dropped 10%, which is a technical definition of a correction. Um, they're saying, how long did it take to regain that 10% drop? And so far that Dow hasn't done it. Uh, again, I don't believe that that's been taken out yet. I think in the article is a couple days old, but um, yeah, it goes all the way back to 1961 where it uh, had a streak of 223 trading sessions. And that's a long time ago, you know, well, well over 50 years there. So uh, either way, for what it's worth, one of those you may be useless statistics, but it kind of does show that the vigor, again, of the rally in the S&P, the only thing that's really been strong since that initial correction was the NASDAQ 100, and that is not a diversified index. That is a super top-heavy uh, index where just a handful, the top five, especially the top 10 components, comprise the bulk of the return. So when you're looking at the U.S. stock market, you want to look at the S&P 500. Even the Dow, although it's only 30 stocks, it's much more representative and balanced of the overall economy. You know, you have financial stocks in there, which you don't have any financial stocks in the NASDAQ 100. Again, it's mostly tech and some other sectors. So uh, interesting to note. So there it is. There's uh, the uh, ES, um, and that's that level we have to watch. Uh, you know, again, it, it wouldn't surprise me if we go up and punch through new highs on the S&P 500. I'd almost expect it, again, being this close. Usually when you get that close to a well-watched level, even if you're not going to take it out and blast above it, the market usually, it's like a magnet. The market will punch at that level, punch up above it. And as I mentioned, if we do take it out anytime soon, it is guaranteed to be a divergent high in the S&P 500. So um, while anything can happen, it's certainly a breakout. If we do get a breakout above the January highs, one that I won't be chasing. I can tell you that right now. So uh, let's see. First things first. Let's, you know, the, the ES and the S&P 500 has to take out the top of this trading range. Uh, those recent highs right there. And then when you go back to a daily chart, uh, let's do that real quick. Uh, you have to go to SP, we'll go to SPY. We can look at that or SPX. There it is. There's what it looks like. The primary uptrend line. This goes to the left of that chart. This goes back a ways. We're still back testing. There's your divergence. We have divergence from the January high, and we also have a separate divergence. If you look at right here uh, on this most recent high, so you have uh, you can call it double divergence, call it whatever you want. But bottom line, it's it's negative divergence. It's also back testing that trend line. So again, you know whether it makes a new high or not. Six to one, half dozen to the other. Uh, it would have to take it out and then just keep roaring up to take out these divergences. So if we do pop to new highs again, I would, I, my expectation is it would fail shortly thereafter. Shortly thereafter could be the same day, could be a few days to probably no more than a couple weeks and probably limited by my guess within five or so percentage points of uh, taking out that previous high. Okay, and a quick look at uh, the currencies. Uh, if you've checked out that post I put on the site yesterday, and I've done this many times in the past, laid out long-term charts uh, overlaying gold in the U.S. dollar, and it's shown a unmistakable inverse correlation between the two. And again, it's not a day-to-day. -day. Sometimes I'll get that, oh, dollars up today and so is gold or vice versa. No, I'm talking trends. And again, just overlay that chart, overlay any chart going back at least a couple years or more, and you will see what is clearly an unmistakable inverse correlation, meaning one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. And so what I like to do is on that post yesterday, I'll overlay, you can take GLD, the ETF, and overlay it with a chart of UDN, which is the inverse dollar index. That's easier for some people that don't have that visual um, you know, skill. It can quickly look at two different things, one going up, one going down. Uh, that might be a little harder for some to see that correlation. So when you overlay gold with UDN, you're flipping the dollar upside down. Now you have a positive correlation. And again, that's a chart I laid out yesterday and many times in the past. So point being that it uh, doesn't matter to me what gold does today, tomorrow, next week. It matters to me what the dollar does. And this is the euro, US dollar pair. Euro is by far the largest component. And I posted this bullish falling wedge yesterday. Prices were still inside it. So it did break out. We had a breakout. The only thing I've added to this chart, other than the one I posted on the site yesterday, was this level here. Um, because it's a pretty decent, it's not a solid, but it's a, it's a, what I call mild support level because you have some reactions. In fact, we could probably even have a zone right here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at all these, these recent reactions. You have some reactions from above, reactions from below. We broke out and we've been back testing that level. 
PPO has jumped up above the zero line, that's bullish. And again, we had a divergent low uh, there at that point. So if this continues to play out as I suspect it will, and ideally it's not absolutely necessary to hold this level. You know, I mean, we could easily go on and back test, come down here, let's extend this trend line, back test, move on up. That's certainly a possibility. But uh, ideally for the case for reversal in gold and the uh, US dollar, meaning dollar down, you want to see the euro hold support here come up. And then this is that level I expect the uh, next reaction at about 114.3 or so on the euro US dollar pair, a little reaction there and then a breakout. And uh, if that happens, um, I can all but guarantee the gold will follow. If it doesn't follow immediately, sometimes there's a lag time, um, but eventually you'll see gold follow suit because that'll be, mean the dollar's falling as the euro's rising. And again, there were other bunch of other charts I put up um, but uh, on, on various currencies, but this is the one I'm watching closely. And here it is on the daily chart, euro, US dollar, and you have this big potential divergence not yet confirmed we want to see this bullish crossover happen soon meaning these two lines cross and the uh and the ppo heads up but you can see the rsi and the ppo strongly diverging just like we had a divergent high here that triggered this correction uh or preceded that correction i should say it's really the breakdown that's when you get a buy signal or sell signal when we broke that trend line support the divergent high said hey be on the lookout there's a likely trend reversal coming and that did mark the high and then we went on and then once it primary trend line broke boom that's all she wrote we came down here very solid support level we danced on that support level for quite a while it was that previous reaction high from back here in november and finally broke down but again i've been maintaining even before it happened actually a, a scenario of what i call a bear trap false breakdown we break below snap back up that level and if that happens uh, it would be very bullish for gold and very bearish for the u.s dollar hasn't happened yet first things first let's look for that 60 minute chart to firm up again this is the daily chart then let's look for this daily chart to firm up let's look for recovery back above this level here about 115.4 or so and uh, then after that, a break of that trend line, that would pretty put, pretty much, in my opinion, put the nail in the coffin for the uh, U.S. dollar, uh, and you know, pretty mean that we're, meaning that we're most likely have seen a trend reversal, the uptrend in the dollar over, and a new downtrend underway. And again, the long chart, long term chart also comes into play here, very much so with uh, this multi year, two and a half year trading range in the euro US dollar uh, breakout back here, back test at the top of that range, uh, another leg up. We had a very clear, and it was pointed out at the time, negative divergence, little wedge. We broke that trend line. That was our sell signal after the divergent high warned us of a correction. Sell signal came came danced around on the top of the trading range for a while and now we had this little move down to the lower end that's why i have two lines that's why that's a, a support zone so it's really do or die time i think for the euro us dollar pair it needs a hold here otherwise this may just prove to be uh, this recent consolidation above there that could prove to be a, a bearish pennant if you see i draw it like this and there's your flagpole that's an impulsive move down and that would take us down to the bottom of that range so i cannot rule that scenario out not even close yet but first things first, we need to see this level hold. And to do so, we need those 60 minute and daily charts that I just showed to play out. If we do, then we have a good chance we're gonna get a rally, another thrust up in the Euro, drop in the dollar, and that means a rally in gold. And again, uh, you know, if the charts confirm, we'll, we'll have another trade. We've stopped out of the GDX trade recently. We tried to catch it, um, but I will go right back into that trade when the when I see some buy signals and, uh, you know, I'm pretty confident of a reversal. But uh, right now, we just have to let the dust settle on this big move down. All right, so we'll wrap it up there. And uh, again, anything, uh, any updates? I believe I put, yeah, I put quite a bit in the trading room today. If you're a gold member, check that out. Uh, crude oil, Bitcoin, everything else in there. Uh, but I'll do an update on the on the site and particularly commodities. I want to take a look at update some of the, the agricultural commodities and uh, a couple other metals that stand out to me right now. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. 